Jaden Sancho legitimately on the list for Tottenham. They're talking 50, 60 million. I said it on last night's show. I will drive him to your club for that. <laughs> I would. Technical ability, Jaden Sancho has it for days. Physical ability to play in the Premier League. I I'm sorry to say this about him, but he's a bit of a cream puff. Doesn't have that strength. Doesn't have that explosive speed that's needed. Please Tottenham buy him. But you guys excited about the idea of maybe getting Jaden Sancho? Um... You Spurs fans on? Go on, George. I wouldn't say excited. And like like you say, for me, like Sancho, when he signed for Man United, look, we all get the band now. We, we all love to run the jokes on him. But he generally was one of the best talents in Europe when he came there. He was mm. a top player at Dortmund. And everyone saw he had all the attributes making to be a top winger in the Premier League. Like I said, I don't feel like he's hit the ground running. I don't feel like all the background issues that's been going on with Man United over the past two seasons has helped. I feel like also there is some bad influences around him at Man United. I feel like there's just too much friends and people around that makes him comfortable in the environment. So when he's there, he's not actually too focused on the football. I feel like there, there's a sense of similar what's happened, what happened to Deli Ali at Tottenham, what could potentially happen to Sancho. I feel like it is a good time for him to make a move. I wouldn't be so against it. I feel like if he comes into this Tottenham team under Ange, um, where, where we play with the wide forwards and we're just going to be direct with the 1v1s down the wings, it could work, work towards um, work well for him. I feel like he would have a great link up with Poro and it'd be a move that I'd actually be open to. 60 million might be pushing it. Knowing us as Spurs, I'm not saying it's too much money in general, but we don't spend too much. Spending 60 million on Sancho means we're not spending that 60 million on any other attacking mm -hmm. players and any other attacking players we bring in are going to be minimal transfers. So I'm not too sure if I want to put all my eggs in the uh, Jadon Sancho basket, but I wouldn't write him off. I do think that he has still has a future in the Premier League and under Ange um, and in, in this Tottenham team, I think he can do something. It'd be very interesting to see and I, I think he'll do well. I, I yeah, hate, I'd I be against it, that. to be honest. You'd be against I'd, it? Yeah, because right now, he's not what we need. We need two centre-backs, ideally a left-footed centre-back to partner Romero. We need I mean, another good centre-back to come to defend. For six million euros. I mean. uh, forget, forget that. And then we also need... Phil uh, Jones is available for free. Phil Jones is available for free. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were having serious either. conversations he, here, lad. Maybe Maguire the is a package as well with <laughs> Sancho. <laughs> oh my God. So, right, yeah, if you but... buy Sancho, we throw in Phil Jones and Maguire for free, bub. Exactly. That's... <laughs> that one, nah, free. You know what? Sancho is a talented player. I like him. I liked him before he joined Man United. Even, uh, funny enough, the game against Tottenham at, uh, at, our, at our stadium, he was good and he scored a goal and he looked good in that. He came off around about the 60th, 70th minute, but he had a good game that game. But he's not what we need right now. We need more pressing targets to come in first. So I don't really understand the links, if I'm being honest. And I'd rather that be at the end of the window once we've got the... I mean, we need a goalkeeper. Yes, we're close to David Ray, our call. We need a centre-back to come in and start. We need another good centre-back off the bench because Tang, uh, sorry, uh, Davidson Sanchez, Eric Dyer, and even, um, uh, what's his name, the young guy that isn't young anymore. Tanganga. Tang like, Tang yeah, Tanganga. So crap, I forgot his name. Tanganga, he's, he, he needs to go. We need a creative midfielder. There's so many pieces we need before we'd go and buy Jaden Sancho. So for me, it doesn't make any sense. Um, I do like him, but right now, no. I hear you. Kaz, as much as I'm someone that isn't the biggest fan of Sancho at United, I know he's got talent. Would you be worried about him leaving and then we see the real Jaden Sancho? Would you give him one more year to try and prove himself at the club? Or do you think he's had enough opportunities now? No, I'll get rid of him. I'm not, I've had enough. Two years. But then before you know it, he's, you know you know where he comes down to? Ed Woodward at this stage of giving him 350k. So when he... Typically, you start negotiating with a player when he got two years left on his contract, right? So what happens when it comes to contract negotiations and he's still on 350k? And then at this point, he might start thinking, oh, I might just run down my contract then. That's still 350k. He ain't going to get a bump up contract from that. He's going to have to take a pay cut. Depending on how much he wants it at United, I'd get rid of him. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to the idea of give, uh, keeping him for one more season. But for what Man United need right now, Garnacho is our best winger for me. Then there's Rashford. Who I think is more of an inside forward. That left hand side sorted. Now look at the right hand side. 80 million man. That's that, that's that's Ten Hogs guy. He, he looked good on the right. I liked him in the right, especially on preseason. But I think Ahmad Diallo is gonna come in and and, and Pelestri will be looking for some game time next year, improve game time. And and where does he fit? And then now you've got a 72 million man on the bench. 
you know, and what for? Because he's got to live up to his potential. Then we're going to have to question. It's, it's, it's always going to be like the Pogba. Like, I love Pogba, man, you know, one of my favorite players, but the inconsistencies were annoying. His injuries were annoying. The problems were just annoying. And yes, I would say there's some, uh, some other stuff that he didn't deserve from the media. But it's like, when are you going to unlock Sancho? It's a bit like Pogba. When you're going to unlock Pogba, you're going to give him the keys? Yeah. And, that, that, and, it, that it nonsense, and that nonsense never worked. And you are right. End of this next season, he goes into his last two years. He isn't going to want to... Even if we sell him, by the way, we're going to have to still pay a percentage of his salary because he's yeah. never going to give up that 350. So you are looking at a situation, you're right, where if you keep him, you then end up... You either let him go for free, but then you've got a man taking up a squad space, <clears> 350 grand a week for another two years. Or you do a deal with a club like Tottenham and say, right, you're going to pay him 150 grand. We still might have to pay him 100, 150,000 pound a week for the rest of his contract, but it frees up the opportunity to bring somebody else in. I'm, I, I am a little. Did Ben know. Jacobs also say that um, Napoli and another Italian club are potentially PSG. Playing PSG are looking at Sancho as well? And I know they're looking definitely for a winger of some sort because there's, Neymar is on the way there's out. Talent, there's talent in him. There's needs- talent in the guy. And yeah. there's no doubt there'll be big clubs interested in him. Uh, I, look, I'd, I'd much prefer him to leave and go to PSG or Napoli because he's not as much of a threat to us. The one thing when you sell your talented players, whether they deliver yeah. for you or not to other Premier League clubs, they can hurt you more being at home. But Can I throw one more? If buts, maybe. Yeah, what well, if you give him a proper striker to work with? Sancho's known to be working with a proper striker at Dortmund. Harland, uh, the one before that was, uh, they had that poacher where he always get uh, injured all the time. Paco. Uh, was it not Dembele? Alcacer. Paco Alcacer. Yeah, Paco Alcacer as well. A poach, like a proper striker in the box. He's only 22 at the end of the day. We might prove it, but I don't think Man United can afford, and I think you'd agree, Terry, for more potential. I, now. I, yeah, I, I agree with you. And a few people, by the way, earlier said, why did I call Deluded Deluded? Because that's his YouTube name. <laughs> that's my <laughs> name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why did you call somebody Deluded? It's his name. Yeah, man. Do you think Man United should give Sancho another another year? We know he's got the talent, but do you feel two years is enough to show some consistency? Or, or, or does he deserve more time based on the talent that he's got? It's a techie one with Sancho because I think one thing that never helped Jaden is this perception. He's never really been a winger that hugs the touchline. He's never quite lived or died by goals and assists. His game is more built on short, short, short passes and things like that. Um, I don't think he was prepared to deal with necessarily the pressure that comes with wearing the shirt for Man United. Obviously, he's joined Man United where it's been a turbulent time where, like you lot said, there's several areas in your squad you can improve. I'd persist with him, but while he's still young at 22, 23, you want to see a little more. He does seem like one of those players that you have to consistently put an arm around and when he's in good form you lot probably have seen it there's probably been a series of games where he's really played out of his skin and then after that he's kind of dropped off a level where you want Man United to go back to where they need to be obviously they're humans but probably need less of that I'd persist with him because I don't think you have another choice I think if you were to get rid of him you know you're reliant on someone taking on the wages if he is on 300 odd K even if you're paying a percentage of that, you've got a decision to make. He's got a Euros to obviously concern himself with. So he's got enough reason to want to get it right at United. But as you lot have said, you know, the left-hand side looks a bit sorted. Right-hand side, you've got Mr. Anthony. It's a techie one with Jaden, man. And I really don't know. It's one where it's probably at his career now, where as much as you've got Ten Hag, you've worked with Ronaldo, you've been around talented players, you've got to want it for yourself now. And I just don't see light at the end of the tunnel currently. But, you know, form is temporary, class is permanent. The man's got ability. And I'd have him at Arsenal, really, if I'm honest with you. But honestly, I don't know, man. I think you have to keep him, really. From I... his point of view, the Euros is very important. I'm looking, which is very strange, I'm looking for a, a, another Loftus cheek. Great potential had great seasons at Dortmund. If he doesn't get game time in the next two years, he'll be 25. He might not have another opportunity to show his level. He needs to go and show the level this year to get into the squad for the Euros for the England, and that will make his future bright again. But if he stays at Man United, doesn't get it right this year at Man United, I think it might be done. Maybe the screen is too much for again. But maybe, maybe it is. Like, this is the thing. We, I think uh, there's pictures of him the other day on a runway somewhere about to get onto a private jet go on holiday. And I saw some United fans angry at him. For me, I'm only ever angry at somebody's performance. I don't care that he's going on holiday with his boys. Go live your life. Do your thing. I love that. But maybe there's an element of Jaden Sancho where because of the contracts and the, the endorsements and the money he makes, maybe there's a part of him that just isn't as hungry as I would like him to be as a footballer. Now, yeah, naturally, he probably is complacent. There, there is there is an element of that, and I don't have a problem with that. 
other than I don't want players like that at my club because I want everybody with an attitude to try and become the best in the world. So the team is the best. And I feel like maybe for Jaden, it's about finding a club where they're happy for you just to be a good footballer as opposed to striving to keep improving. Now, I might be well off the mark there and he's working harder than anybody else and trying to get himself back to the top. But whatever the reason is for him not performing at Man United, whether it's whether it's handling the pressure, like you said, deluded, whether it's he doesn't want it as much as maybe some of the fans want him to, maybe it's just that the style of football in the Premier League and the speed isn't suited to him. Whatever that reason, you've got to make a decision as to whether or not you give him another chance or you move him on because... All I care about is my football club getting better. And, and the problem is when you keep someone like Sancho not delivering, too many people online become personal about him. And that's where it becomes an issue. I'm just talking about his professionalism. As a, When I saw him pull out that tackle against Sevilla, yeah, I call him a cream puff. But I'm talking about his on the, on the football pitch. I don't know what he's like in real life. I'm not going to judge his personality. That's stupid. But mm. professionally, I'm just not sure he's going to cut it. And free Terry, ball, don't you think that's that, like... He reflects the culture of what Man United was when he came into the club. Yes. Exactly that. Yeah. And, it, it, and that's what I feel like. He obviously, I don't feel like since Ten Hag come in, you can see a big change in a lot of the players. I feel like he's just one of those players that are still stuck in that past prior to Ten Hag. That he hasn't had such an impact on him personally. Maybe because he doesn't favour him as a player. He signed Anthony straight away to replace him. So maybe he feels a bit left out. But I definitely think that under a new team, a new club that you will see a new lease of life. It looks like he needs a mentality shift more than anything. Yeah, yeah but isn't it? Like isn't he's got a really good argument. It's not an argument that he's just maybe just not good enough. There's also that. Because, because, yeah. because, you, because yeah. you look at it, no, because you just look at it and I like, look, at Dortmund is great, but there's so many players that have done really, really well at Dortmund. They just do really, really well. Like, Dortmund's that type of team, especially if you come in. In Germany, you know I mean? full stop, really. You, you, you play a lot of games. Do you know what I mean, regardless of who you are, you like Dahoud was playing loads of games. Now he's at Brighton. Do you know what I mean, at one point, Liverpool linked with him. Like, maybe he's just not but, good but, enough because for Shinji England, Tagawa, he hasn't been amazing. Shinji Tagawa always stands out to me. That man for three years at Dortmund before he joined United, people talk about one of the best number 10s in the world. He comes to Man United well. and he was all right. Mekatarian, yeah, another one. There loads of them. Halle are as well. He's gone back to Germany. He's doing all right. Mm. Mm. That so that's, true. that's what maybe what it is because when you look at it from a marketing perspective, and that's what United just always do. Oh, look, we're going to get a new number seven. It's going to work out. It's going to be able to go and do X, Y, Z. You know, like it's a wing ice. It's, it's the new new thing up and coming from. Do you know what I mean from, um, from uh, like from? Do you know what I mean from this abroad kind of just pack of just players? And maybe it's just not that. Maybe it's just not. This is you start talking. A Liverpool fan here said, "Here's the Evertonian." Uh, shake my head, depressing. Yeah, this Liverpool fan don't like you, JJ. Think you're an Evertonian. Yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can see it. 